prepared to play one right now. Woo! It was a long day. Anyway, let's talk about some changes that have happened since I made an update video like this. I had a great Christmas season, played a lot, did a bunch of stuff. Um, it was a lot of fun uh, and I was very busy so I didn't make any videos. And then I had like 10 days off. Nothing to do. It was great. Had a nice staycation here with my wife. I practiced a lot but I did not feel like making a video. And then got busy again. So here I am a couple weeks later, a bunch of stuff has changed. So let's talk about that. My playing has gotten a lot better. We're going to talk about that in later videos. Let's talk about physical things because those are what we like to talk about anyway. First of all, this horn that I was just playing is not the 42 AFG that I usually play for large tenor. That's right here. They look pretty similar, don't they? But they're not quite the same. This is, of course, much earlier instrument, I think early 2000s. It's got the LT slide, which is nickel outer tubes, no oversleeves, <clears throat> a nickel crook. We've got an OE Thayer valve, an original one, of course. Normal stuff back here, who cares? And gold bell. And uh, I got this recently, today. I've literally played it for like two hours. And it's a pretty cool instrument. Uh, it was pretty cheap, it's a good deal. And I think it's going to be my large tenor for the foreseeable future until the large tenor project, TM, is finished sometime this decade. Um, it came in this case, which I will promptly throw in the garbage. I hate these things. What a useless piece of crap. I mean, you can't move it. They're not safe to put the horns in. They're not very protective. I hate those things. I'm going to put it in a case graveyard, and there it will live for the rest of time until I can take them all to a dump and they can just be destroyed. Um, this horn is great. Um, I shouldn't say it's great. It's good. It does the job perfectly well. It makes a box sound. It plays pretty well. It's nice and even. Um, valve is not the quietest thing. I have cleaned it out. I have oiled it. But it does play really well and it is quick. The slide has great action. Seems to play pretty well. Probably not going to play it with this slide, even though I just did in the video. I'm probably going to play with my Edwards or Shire's slides. I also have a Corporation 42 slide, normal one, out there somewhere. Someone's borrowing that. I should probably get that back and try it again, huh? Anyway, that's a big purchase. Um, many other changes and purchases recently. Uh, I got this in the mail today. Greg Black, Joseph Alessi 3M. Can we see this? Uh, yeah, we can. Look at that. Um, I've owned a bunch of the Alessi mouthpieces and the New York mouthpieces, the ones that came after this, that are largely the same. I have not owned a 3. I've owned a 3.5, maybe a 3.25. I don't think I have. But other ones in other sizes haven't owned the 3, which is the shallowest version with the 3 rim. And I really dig it. Um, they're the shallowest version. They're not necessarily shallow, so it's still a really good just tenor mouthpiece. Um, it's a little shallower than my 3G, 5G, and on the LT42 setup, it's a little bright, so I didn't use it for this video. But with my other slides, it might be the choice. Cool mouthpiece, just randomly popped up, and I literally got it today in the mail. Um, what's some other stuff? Oh, I bought this for no reason. Um, Edwards axial valve section were in need of some work, some TLC. Why did I buy this? I don't know. I just, I can't help myself. I'm like, ooh, a valve section. That could be useful someday. Do I have a horn to put this on? Nope. Do I have parts to fix it? Nope. Does it need work? Yes, it does. So someday, perhaps, this will go on an instrument. Why do I do this to myself? Also, I don't know if I've ever talked about this. I got this months and months ago, but I just got it physically. A um, friend dropped it off. A Wilson Kdex valve for large tenor. This is the successor to the Rotax valve. Got a bunch of improvements. It's very fancy, very well CNC machined. Um, maybe someday I'll show the insides of it, even though I don't really want to take it apart. Um, very nice valve. Do I have a project for this? No. I don't. I have no plans for it at all. 
but I sure do own it. And uh, as there's the possibility of a project someday, yet another large tenor project. I do play large tenor sometimes. Obviously, that's all I've talked about so far. But it's not my primary instrument. I don't know why I spend so much time on these things. Uh, next, look, another large tenor. Um, Holton 258. Um, just saw this in a video. Um, I played this um, on some etude or other. I don't even remember what it was. Really good horn. It's actually a little better than my first one. It's more even. The low range is much better. Um, and I think I've talked about this one before. Before it got fixed. It is now fixed. The Obviously the flare is off right now. But the bell brace got moved. The uh, valve lever is now in the correct spot. You can put your hand on it and play at the same time. And it's just like really good. And someone bought it already. Someone's got a deposit on it, so I don't get to keep it, and uh, nobody else gets to buy it. It does have this really cool um, patina on the bell. The flare doesn't have quite the same patina, so I think it must have happened separately. I don't know. I would like to replicate that on an instrument in raw brass. I don't know how it happens. It just randomly does. And it seems to be easier on Holton Red Brass, because my... Holton 180 that I had way back in the day, same thing. Uh, I don't know if I've talked about this. Uh, Con 6H, 1950s, like a 5758. Yep, it's a 500 bore small tenor. This one is in really good shape. It has like no dings. It's missing a little bit of lacquer. It plays really, really well. The slide is really good. It just popped up out of nowhere. It was really cheap and it came with two slides. like. The original slide, which is amazing, and this like cobbled together, made out of director, con director parts slide with a removable lead pipe that is certainly a slide. Why? I, I just don't know why this thing came like this, like this amazing horn with this weird extra slide. Anyway, I have that. I'm probably going to sell it because I don't really have a use for 6H. They are great horns. I've owned two before, uh, but nothing I really do requires that instrument and if i need a small uh small tenor with no valve i have my lt16m which i adore and someday it'll get out of the case again it has not been out for many many months um i have a 50b2 valve section sitting on my desk not because i bought this thankfully i did i would never buy one of these by the way these are useless um this is from the 50b2 that i already owned Except everything's chopped off of it. Why would that be? Well, yoink, I mounted the bell, as in I paid somebody money to mount the bell on my monster horn. So now I have two uncut yellow brass uh, 50 bells mounted to this. This is not a corporation bell. My other two bells, one is uncut, one is the screw ring. Those are both corporation bells. This is a 1981, so just post-corporation. Corporation goes up until like 1979, 1980, and right after that, they you know take the corporation stamp off. This is just barely after that, and it's a really good bell. Um, it's a little bit different sounding. It's a little bit heavier. I can tell literally just holding it that it's just a little bit heavier than my other uh, my other bell, but it's got a really cool sound. It's a little bit a little tiny bit warmer, a little bit less full spectrum with the higher overtones my other bell has. And uh, yeah, very exciting. I'm a little let down because I wanted to get it um, put on here to see if I wanted to have it cut because I'm not super on board with my screw bell lately. Um, but I'm not sure if this would be a good cut bell either um, because it plays a little heavier than my other bell already. If you put a screwing on it, it just gets even chunkier. So. I might just have two bells for this that are not cut, which is a bummer because I do want that screw bell. Who knows? Um, I think that about wraps it up. A lot of new little things. Oh, no, there's one more. A King Legends case. Look, looks like this. It's got this nice slim appearance. It kind of looks like it's carbon fiber. Of course, it's not carbon fiber. It would cost you know three times as much. But this is made by King, and it fits all the small board King trombones, 2B, 3B, 3BF, etc. Perfectly. They just snug 
right in. Fits the slides perfectly, everything. Very cool cases. A little bit thicker than the SKB. The SKB is like a good couple inches less thick than this. So that's kind of a bummer. I also don't like the double handles. Like, why? I mean, I don't have super big hands, so it's not very comfortable for me to hold both. So I end up holding one of them. Just, just have one handle. Um, I got this for cheap because new they're kind of expensive. And I just assumed I would never own one. And the one horn that I want to put in here doesn't fit. <laughs> My King 608F, which has been modified. The bell section fits. Boom. Slide. It's just a little bit too long. So I might have to modify the case, which would not be hard. I just kind of like push some foam out of the way. And this will be the 608 case. For now, it sits with no horn in it, which is kind of sad. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Of course, I do own a 3BF that fits perfectly, and it lives in a double case all the time. So, no real use for it right now, but I sure do have it, just like I sure do have an Edwards Axial Valve Section. I sure do have a 50B2 Valve Section, and I sh I'm just so many things like that. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got for today. I'm going to talk more about my playing in upcoming videos and some planned projects. That's all I got for now. Bye-bye.